Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy, Spark. Uh, hey, Sunday, July 28th, uh, 2019, year of our Lord. And uh, we are here doing the Bladeforms.com uh, 20th anniversary year of giveaways. This is week 30. Week 30 uh, giveaway is going to be for the Becker BK5 Magnum Camp Knife, giant camping kitchen knife, as you can see. Uh, we are going to be giving this away. We're going to be giving away um, all kinds of other neato stuff, such as Bladeforms.com stickers, Bladeforms.com Velcro patches, uh, Bladeforms.com logo t-shirts, as you can see behind me, uh, Bladeforms.com memberships, and of course the grand prize of the uh, Becker BK5, as well as a live stream of your prize pack uh, that I'll be doing later uh, this show. This week we're going to be giving away on the live stream a SOG TF5 um, Trident in desert camo, uh, partially serrated because I know all of you guys love uh, uh, desert camouflage knives or assisted opening. And we've got some other awesome crap for the live stream viewer. Um, we have, as usual, the SE AH1 Arrowhead. That'll be going into the uh, live stream prize pack. We have the uh, SOG, we have some stickers, one from uh, Wiley X, one from HK Knives uh, that'll be going in. I've got some miscellaneous desk crap that I'll be tossing in, such as uh, some 550 cord, maybe a couple uh, zip ties and uh, various uh, colors from Harbor Freight. Um, who knows, somebody might get some Arby sauce, and of course, the live stream prize pack um, favorite. Gas station knives covered in hobo juice. This week we are doing a AK-47 Flying Falcon, as you can see, is a Tanto lockback. Uh, Three-inch closed tactical folder, stainless steel blade, thumb screws for easy operation. Says it's uh, model 15342, AK-47 Flying Falcon. This one does not feel like it's covered in hobo juice. Uh, single thumb stud. God, ugh. Well, never mind. It actually is kind of sticky. Um... Yeah, single thumb stud here. <laughs> Awful, terrible, terrible gas station knife that I'm going to inflict on one of you guys. And, uh, you know, the usual stuff. Um, we'd have better prizes for the live, live stream prize pack, but as you can see, you know, right here on the window, look who's here, Iron Kid 883. Because Iron Kid 883 is here, you know, we don't have better prizes. Iron Kid 883 is, again, you know, the cause of much strife in the world. And, uh, yeah, really an awful person. So make sure that, um, make sure that you blame Iron Kid 883 for, uh, lack of, uh, you know, gold doubloons and various other high speed, uh, prizes that will be given away. So, yeah, um, here we are, bladeforms.com, 20th anniversary, uh, year of giveaways, week 30. We are past the halfway point. We are almost, uh, yeah, we got... You know, after this week, we'll have 21 weeks left. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just a few more months left of giving stuff away. I've got a ton of knives left to give away. I'm going to have to start doubling up on some of the uh, prizes uh, that get given out because, I, you know, I counted up uh, various things. And, you know, before I just stopped counting, we had 40-plus knives left to give away. And that's before, you know, gas station hobo stuff. You know, we've got stuff from Ontario. We've got stuff from... Um, We've got stuff from Ontario, Kaiser, we've got stuff from Buck, we've got stuff from uh, K-Bar. Yeah, we've just got a whole bunch of stuff to uh, uh, give away, so I'm going to have to probably double up on some of this stuff if I want to get done uh, by the end of the year. Otherwise, we may just have to keep on going uh, into the 21st, uh, year, 21st anniversary of uh, your giveaways. So yeah, um, yeah, that's how it is. Nine people watching so far. We'll get more people as the uh, broadcast uh, comes in. It's good to see Gary Grayley, Mark Grant, Pioma, uh, David Paskowski, Jason Puckett, KM, uh, Big Bad Goth, uh, Iron Kids here, fuck him, and uh, Ricardo Torres. So, yeah, uh, yeah, we've got a bunch of uh, names I do recognize, a couple names that I don't. But I'm happy to see you guys anyhow. And one of you guys uh, that tunes in and listens to all of this will get uh, will get uh, this bad boy. Not Iron Kid. He won't get shit. But uh, one of you American folks will get it. 
So yeah, um, it is hot as fuck out here, folks. It is just, it is super warm today, like 95 degrees. Um, listening to the uh, Tree Hugging Hippies call this, uh, you know, weather in, or climate instead of weather again. Whenever it's cold in the winter, it's not weather, or it's not climate, it's weather. Whenever it's warm in the summer, it's climate change. So, you know, big deal. Just happy I'm in the uh, U.S. Uh, where air conditioning is a regular thing. And, uh, you know, waiting for the uh, uh, air conditioning to kick on here in the shop, as a matter of fact. It was 90-something when I walked in the door here at 4 p.m. to get ready for the show. So, there it is. All right, so, for... Who, uh, let's see in, uh, yeah. Okay, so we do have somebody in chat who's, uh, uh, their first time. CB66AM1. Uh, I have no idea who you are. Um, yeah, air conditioning is the new sexism. Exactly. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, the air conditioning is making my nipples show. Yeah, sorry. We're a cardigan. You know, some of us are sweaty bastards and like it cool. So, anyone else besides CB66 AM1 uh, here for uh, the first time? Or is, uh, you know, are there other people who, well, doesn't matter. I'll go through the spiel anyhow. All right. So, one more time, this time with feeling. This is how it works. Every week, um, we have a giveaway thread. This week, it is for the uh, K Bar Becker BK5. Um, Magnum Camp, the picture of which you can see right here, giant ass knife. And, uh, you know, you guys do the entries. I mean, that's how you found this. I, I'm thinking is that uh, you guys have gone to the giveaway thread and put an entry in and you want to see uh, how it's going. Uh, this week we had something like uh, 385 entries into the Magnum Camp thread. <laughs> Nico, I've got prize packs stacked up, waiting to go. So there's, uh, if you haven't received a prize pack, then <clears throat> then chances are it's waiting to get shipped out. Uh, I've just, I, hell, I'm so far behind. I just sent Gary W. Grayley a message uh, for the prize pack that he won, requesting his address. So yeah, prize packs are are going out. So anyhow, uh, how this works is everybody uh, gets in, or you know, somebody. We I post the giveaway thread. You guys come in behind it and post uh, uh, in the giveaway thread. And, um, you know, we go to random.org, which is right over here. And I take the uh, first post from the giveaway thread that's not mine, which is post number two, and take the last post, uh, which is 385. And when I click on the generate button, uh, the uh, it will generate a random number. And the result will show right here. And then we go back to the giveaway thread, which is over here, and we'll pick that out. So really simple, very easy. It removes the um, removes a complaining about uh, nepotism and stuff like that. Nobody can say, "Oh, Spark, Spark! Oh, you just you're giving uh, the prizes away to your friends. Oh, God, Spark, you're such a bastard." You know, why aren't you giving these away to random folks? And, you know, you guys get to watch me uh, pick the numbers live, uh, you know, via random drawing on the uh, broadcast here. So, you know, there's no uh, whining about uh, nepotism or anything else like that. So here's uh, basically let's uh, let's do let's do a giveaway real quick for sticker. And uh, you guys can see how it's done for those of you who have uh never watched before. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to random.org. I'm going to hit the uh, generate button here. And as you can see, it generated the very first result of 255. So we go over to the giveaway thread here. We go to page uh, 15, I believe it's going to be 255 or post number 255 is going to be on page, no, page 13. All right, so we go over to there, and post number 255 goes is Gronk, G-R-O-N-K, and he wins the Bladeforms.com sticker. So that is awesome for him. And you can see here, um, I've got a sticker in my hand, the giveaway uh, thread, uh, the sticker prize is going to post number 255, Five five. And the username is Gron, capital K, 
and he wins the sticker. And that's just that's exactly how easy it goes. And we would be done in five minutes if that's uh, that's all I was doing. But I like to uh, take up your guys' time for about an hour, hour and fifteen minutes, talking about various other stuff. So uh, yeah, that's it. So next up, uh, we will give away a bladeforums.com uh, Velcro patch here. Patches are available in multiple colors. Um, I think I've got a bunch of them up on my desk here. Yeah. All right, so here's one in OD green, one in OD green that's out of the package. Here's one in multicam. You can't really see it that well. Uh, here's one in stealth gray. Again, can't see it that well. I think I've got a picture of the patches. Yeah, here's all the uh, bladeforms.com patches uh, that we have. Uh, you can see there's blue uh, for the classic logo, gold for gold members, multicam, OD green, and stealth gray. Uh, surprisingly, stealth gray has been a really popular choice for people who uh, win the uh, patch in the giveaway. So, you know, I, I never would have guessed it would have been that popular. I would have figured that the uh, gold membership... Uh, patch would have been more popular, but it's been like even with stealth gray and the blue logo. So, so yeah, um, cool. So we got 13 people uh, here uh, now watching. So it's good to see uh, good to see most of you, except for Iron Kid. Fuck that guy. So uh, housekeeping issues. Make sure that you like and comment. Or make sure that you like uh, the video down below. Make sure that you comment, subscribe, uh, subscribe your kids' as YouTube accounts to the channel. Subscribe everybody to the uh, to the channel. Forward it to your friends on Facebook, etc. Um, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe on the video. For some reason, apparently, it helps with our metrics on that. So I'm seeing stuff, weird stuff going on in chat. Big bad golf, baby screaming on Iron Kid's lap at the moment. Yeah, of course the baby's screaming. Have you seen Iron Kid, Big Bad Goth? I mean, I, I, you're married to him, so obviously you have, but has everyone else seen him? I'd be screaming too if I was a baby. Even if I didn't act like a baby, I'd scream, you know, if I was sitting on his lap. I mean, that dude is just awful. Terrible person. So, yeah. Um... I'm just, I'm basically scatterbrained today, folks. I'm not feeling the best. I don't know what's going on. So let's talk about some news topics here. Um, first off, let's uh, talk about knife rights and why you should uh, join knife rights. Kniferights.com is uh, basically the NRA for the knife industry. And one of the things that you can do is that if you are a member of, um, if you have a Amazon.com uh, pr Prime account, uh, you can go to smile.nra or, or smile.amazon.com and uh, select a organization to donate to with your purchases. And I personally have chosen Knife Rights. Uh, you guys could choose whoever you want. I suggest Knife Rights or uh, the NRA or whoever. But basically, Knife Rights is out there fighting battles so that uh, you guys aren't having to. And What's going on in Knife Rights news this week is, do you guys remember about a month ago where a kid from Chick-fil-A uh, basically leapt through the delivery window at Chick-fil-A because there was a child choking to death in the uh, car, in the window, and the lady was panicking that was driving it. And dude just disregarded everything, jumped through the window uh, at Chick-fil-A, pulled out his knife and cut the cord or strap or whatever was choking this kid. Well, everybody in the knife industry heard about this, and uh, Knife Rights got a whole bunch of people together to give this guy something better than this terrible-ass small ninja knife that he was carrying. As you could, I'm not sure if you can see it uh, here in the window, but this is like a awful, awful, awful... M, uh, you know, just cheap import uh, karambit style knife that he had. And Knife Rights uh, basically got together with a whole bunch of manufacturers and they decided that uh, they're going to make sure that this kid has got a quality piece of cutlery. Um, so, yeah, they basically, you know, this is a picture of all the knives uh, that he got with uh, various. Uh, or with the uh, Knife Rights uh, logo laser engraved on them. You've got a K-Bar here. You've got one from White River. This is one from Tops, uh, Protec. This is Bear Ops, SOG. Um, I believe this is a Hogue Ritter uh, MSK Mark V. Another Hogue. Essie. Um, not sure who this is. A Shrade. 
a Spartan's Blade, a Spartan Blades one here. This is a Kaiser Spyderco and a Crudo knife. And check this out. This is also super cool. See this right here? This is a Brian Ty and Friends double action out the front um, auto that these just got uh, released back at Blade Show this year and have been a huge hit. So this uh, kid basically got, you know, $5,000 in um, everyday carry knives. Uh, so that he has got one hell of a selection to carry now when he works um, at Chick-fil-A. And basically, you know, they got a whole bunch of people together to celebrate this. They had, um, hang on just a second here. They had, yeah, Doug Ritter was there. They had, okay, they had uh, the Georgia Center, Bill Heath. Uh, who's the sponsor of the Knife Rights Georgia uh, bills. They had Senator Butch Miller, who, uh, who, who uh, represents the Chick-fil-A uh, district, uh, where he's at. Uh, the Chick-fil-A operator Frank Haney and his son were uh, there. Basically, they turned this into a, a, a party for the kid. But that's not all that uh, was done. On top of this... Um, you know, when everybody or when this story about the kids saving uh, the uh, toddler uh, went viral, um, you know, he had been riding to work every day in his mom's car and the local Toyota dealership, if I remember correctly. Um, let's see. Yeah, local Toyota dealer donated a car for him, and, you know, Knife Rights was going to donate uh, cash towards the GoFundMe for a car for this guy, but instead uh, they donated the money towards uh, insurance um, for him. So, yeah, that's awesome. You know, so not only does this kid get five grand in knives from Artisan Cutlery, Baron Sun Cutlery, um, you know, Brian Ty and Friends, Doug Ritter, Knife Works, SE Knives, Fiddleback Forge, Hogue Knives, K-Bar, Kaiser, Crudo, Protec, Reich Knife, Schrade, Spider Coast, Sog, Specialty Knives, Spartan Knives, Top Knives, and White River Knife and Tool, he also got a car. So yeah, it's not, you know, this is, sometimes God smiles down upon people, and, you know, this guy got rewarded for doing the right thing, and I really wish that more, um, you know, more Americans... Uh, show this kind of spirit and taking care of uh, others. So, you know, I'm glad to see that this kid got rewarded and hopefully it inspires uh, other people to, uh, to you know, help others out. So, yeah, that's awesome. So there we go. Um, I wish the rest of the news that we had this week was, uh, was good. But basically, yeah, there's been some pretty screwed up uh, things happening in uh the u.s um and it's just you know it's it's not great um on a lot of things basically yeah if you guys have watched this uh uh live stream before um you know besides knowing that iron kid sucks you know you can see down here on the scroller iron kid 883 sucks um, if you guys have watched the live stream before, you know I talk a lot about uh, gun control and the Second Amendment and stuff like that. And um, here's one of the things that's going to be, or one of the topics that we're going to be covering this week. Um, in California, uh, California has got basically every piece of gun control that you could want in the world. And the... Um, hang on a sec, sorry. Yeah, uh, California seems to have every uh, bit of uh, gun control that you could want in the world, and still, you know, they want more. So groups like the NRA and California uh, Rifle Association and various other pro-Second Amendment groups are suing uh, California state to prevent further gun control from being enacted. Well, there was a setback handed down uh, this week where a judge ruled that the Second Amendment does not protect semi-automatic killing machines. Basically, District Judge Josephine Stanton, uh, Central District of California, uh, ruled that that AR-15s are functionally the same as an M-16 because reasons. Uh, what's, uh, what happened is, is that she basically just read from amicus briefs uh, done by the Giffords, by the Bradys, by various other... Um, various other um, gun control groups and then she quoted um, 
or she took a position based off of Heller, uh, where assault rifles could be banned because they, uh, like the M16, are weapons that are most useful in, in military service, and they're also not in common use um, for lawful purposes like self-defense. Well, that doesn't really make any sense because there's at least 15 million AR-15s in the U.S. Um, you know, if you've got millions of something going on in the U.S., that's common use. I mean, that's that's just how it is. There's more, um, you know, AR-15s in the U.S. than there probably are any other uh, rifle out there. And you know, saying that uh, um, saying that ban on on AR-15s uh, is constitutional, just completely uh, misreads the Heller decision. Um, and they're basically cherry-picking uh, phraseology from the Heller decision where they say that, uh, um, you know, unusually dangerous weapons such as the fully automatic M16 can be banned. So therefore, because this is similar to the M16, they can, uh, they can ban it too. Um, yeah, this I don't know if how this is going to have to go up on appeal to uh, the Ninth Circuit, uh, which we'll see what happens. Uh, we're not sure what's going to go on there. Uh, Trump has been basically radically reorganizing the Ninth Circuit, uh, tossing a whole bunch of uh, conservative judges in there. So who knows? You know, they may get a uh, friendly three-judge panel that overturns the uh, uh, California law. Or it may have to get appealed up to the Supreme Court, where we'll get in two or three years another decision. Um, but basically, California is the bellwether on this, because where California goes, that's where the rest of the nation goes when it comes to gun control. And you know, because these guys are saying that uh, the semi-automatic rifles are incredibly effective killing machines and that they're not commonly used for self-defense, um, you know, they're saying that it. it this could happen. Well, you know, the reason why there, you're not seeing this more often for uh, common use and self-defense in California is because they've been banned for, uh, you know, for decades. And they're just, you know, these are circular, this is circular logic, you know, and it's just, it's nonsense. But what's even worse is that um, you've got attorney generals from multiple other states, knowing that they have to they have to support uh, California's laws, or else they're going to lose their laws too. Like eighteen uh, Democratic assistant uh, or attorney generals from around the country, uh, you know, are helping defend California's ban on possession of uh, high capacity <coughs> magazines because. You know, just like with the assault weapons, they're not going to be happy uh, with just the assault weapons. After they're done with assault weapons, they go for high-capacity magazines, and they go for low-capacity magazines. Then they go for semi-automatic weapons in general. And finally, you know, when all that's gone, they take your shotguns and your bolt-action rifles. Because these people don't believe you have a right to defend yourself. So, you know... <sighs> You know, it, it, these these people are thinking that, yeah, that that banning firearms and banning magazines are reasonable firearms regulations, and that's just not the case. Um, I mean, I really, I really have a hard time articulating today why this stuff is so ridiculous. But you know, if it it goes to show you that you know these people are not honest brokers that we're dealing with, and that. Um, that uh, they don't really care about self-protection. They don't care about individual rights. They just care about promoting a gun control agenda. Uh, they don't think that you should be able to defend yourself. They don't feel like, uh, you know, these people all live in secured areas. And, you know, they, uh, you know they've got state paid for bodyguards in a lot of cases. And, they you know, crime is something that happens to others. So, you know, it's just, it's wacky. Um, you know, and yet again in California, you know, after they're done with the magazines, after they're done with the assault rifles, what are they doing next? They're requiring background checks on ammunition because Lord knows that's going to work. You know, the same people that, uh, 
are you know stealing guns and uh, shooting each other in drive-by shootings are going to definitely totally sit through a background check. I mean, they're already not getting background checks for their rifles and pistols because they're getting them from you know third-party black market sources uh, that trade them for guns or trade them for drugs. You know, or they're being smuggled in from third from third world countries uh, with the drugs that they're trafficking. But of course, you know, ammunition background checks on ammunition are totally going to work. Uh, where background checks on firearms failed completely. Uh, so yeah, uh, they're trying to get an injunction against. Uh, they're trying to get an injunction against the ammunition background check because there's really no way uh, to do it. Um, when the uh, background check uh, uh, requirement took place on July 1st, the system went down really badly, and uh, you know there's uh, multiple um, out-of-state ammunition sellers and California residents, such as Kim Rhodes, who's a uh, six Olympic shooting medal fi uh, winner. Um, yeah, these there, lots of people are trying to fight it, but we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, it's just it's hard to. Hard to fight this stuff when you're going up against a limitlessly funded, um, politically motivated uh, state government. So we'll see what happens there. Um, also, uh, new wildlife legislation introduced in Congress. Uh, fish and wildlife populations um, you know, are having problems. Uh, the House Resolution 3742, so known as uh, Recovering America's Wildlife Act, uh, it's going to provide $1.3 billion to state initiatives. Um, it, was, uh, it was sponsored by uh, Rep. Debbie Dingell and Jeff Fortenberry of uh, Michigan and Nebraska. Uh, 61 original co-sponsors with nationwide support of, from conservationists, hun hunters, anglers, business people, oil and gas company representatives, and outdoor recreation industry. So they're saying this is going to be a game chamber, uh, changer. Uh, it's a cost-effective way to recover fish and wildlife populations. Uh, you know, I am not sure how this is uh, uh, going to be going on. Um, what I mean, they're saying it's going to direct existing federal revenues to wildlife conservation and restoration program. Um, you know, I'm not sure how this is going to uh, change things. You know, the Pittman-Robertson Act uh, already takes money from every... Uh, firearm sale, every ammunition sale, uh, hunting and accessory sale out there. Um, so I'm not sure what this is going to change, but people are excited about it. So hopefully it's a uh, good thing. So yeah, um, we've got some other uh, stuff to cover today. Uh, but you know, basically, it's, uh, it's just one of those uh, weekends. I'm feeling, uh, as you can see, I'm a little bit flushed because it's freaking 90 degrees here in the shop. The air conditioning apparently does not seem to be working very well. So I'm trying to hydrate with some uh, sweet tea. Let's uh, take a look at what's uh, going on in the chat. Gary Grayley, you think they would have included a really nice karambit since that seems to be uh, what he likes to carry? Well, that is a good question, Gary. Um, basically, let's take a look at the... Uh, let's take a look at the uh, uh, knives that they uh, gave him one more time. So here's the uh, uh, knives that they gave him. And if you look here, this Topps knife uh, is almost like a straightened out karambit, uh, but it's a fixed blade. It's not a folder. Um, you know, some of the others here, are, yeah, none of the others here really have that uh, karambit style uh, blade shape. Um, not the Wii knife, not the uh, um, Artisan, you know, not the Shrade or the Hoax or anything like that. I guess they wanted to give him just a bevy of higher quality, um, higher quality um, knives here. And, you know, taking a look at some of these things like the, uh, you know, the Protec. This is uh, Protec uh, TR, uh, I think it was a TR 4.1. You, or this is actually the mini TR4. Um, you've got the Ritter RSK knife um, with the G10 handles and the uh, uh, M390 uh, steel blade that's based off of the older Griptilian design they had. You got the Hoag uh, knife here. You got one by Schrade. You've got uh, one by Kaiser. Um, not sure what the steel is on that. I think that's a titanium handle. Uh, S110V uh, looks like a pair of three um, right there. Let's see what else he got. 
uh, Crudo uh, knife that uh, has a thumb disc opener and flipper. You know, the uh, Tie and Friends uh, OTF uh, Artisan Cutlery. I'm not sure which one this is. Uh, EC Azula. Um, Reiki knives. I'm not sure what the steel is on this. Uh, SOG. Um, you know, ST or SC62, it looks like. And which knife is this? Is this a. Uh, not sure. Oh, Bear Ops. That's a uh, Bear Ops uh, uh, knife. And then you got the tops and the White River and the K bar, and of course the Spartan blades uh, right in the middle there. So, yeah. Um, you know, he got a bunch of great knives. I'm not sure. I mean, you know, honestly, the. the you know, off the top of my head, there's not a huge number of high-quality karambits out there that are folding. I mean, you've got Emerson uh, makes a folding karambit. Boker's uh, Fox brand has some uh, quality karambits under there. Um, you know, off the top of my head, I can't really think of too many uh, uh, karambit uh, folders out there that they could have uh, replaced it with. Um but then again, I mean, I'm not uh, a walking encyclopedia. There may have been more uh, people uh, or more companies out there that just didn't uh, didn't receive word in time or didn't uh, reach out that they uh, could have done it with. So who knows? Uh, hey, you know. But yeah, since he likes scrambits, maybe uh, maybe it'd be a good thing to to hook him up with one. All right, uh, let's see what else is going on in the chat windows. SWEDC ProTech is right down the street for me. That's cool, man. ProTech uh, is a good operation. Dave at ProTech is uh, it's just a really humble and nice dude that's uh, putting out great stuff. All right, the, uh, the karambit that folds, or misplaced hillbilly, the karambit that folds into his own handle would have been cool. Are you talking about the... Uh, um, well, here let me let me see if I can get that pulled up on the screen here. CRKT. Are you talking about the uh, CRKT Provoke um, misplaced hillbilly? Are you talking about this one right here? Because yeah, I mean that would have been a, a cool knife to get them. I mean yeah, it's a D2 um, D2 steel blade. You know, handle collapses in on itself. That's uh, totally a. Uh, um, Totally, it would have been a great knife. I'm surprised nobody uh, actually thought of that or provided that because, yeah, that uh, that would have been a great choice for them. And, you know, like the, uh, let's see if we can find uh, some other uh, folding karambits that, uh, that may have worked for them. Folding karambit. All right, so yeah, there's the um, yeah, there's hundreds of results out there. Um, looking at various ones, I mean, fixed blade ones are are huge, but yeah, Fox Cutlery Five Eleven has some, uh, Mantis has some, um, but yeah, I would have, I would have probably, I would have probably, oh, you know what would have been perfect for this guy. God, how did I not remember this? Spiderco Karahulk. That would have been a perfect, uh, perfect knife for uh, this kid because he likes the Krabbits. Well, the Spiderco Karahulk uh, would have been legendary. They could have uh, given him that, you know, VG10 steel blade, Emerson wave opening feature. He, uh, he would have been uh, good to go. So yeah, that or the uh, Emerson Folding Karambit or the uh, CRKT Provoke, um, all would have been good choices. So yeah, but I mean, that's not to say that the stuff he got was bad. I mean, that was five grand worth of awesome knives, man. The Wee Knife, the Kaiser, the Protec, Tops, uh, K-Bar, the, uh, the RSK from uh, Ritter. The uh, Shrade, the Bear Ops, uh, the Spartan Blades, you know, all those were really cool. Um, yeah, it's just uh, none of it uh, seemed to be Karambit's like what he wanted, so who knows. Uh, well, we'll figure it out. Who knows? Maybe we can, uh, I'll, I'll give uh, Doug a call and see if we can uh, get him a, uh, another knife. In other news, so um, 
Yeah. There's been a serious brouhaha going on online with uh, Donald Trump again, um, you know, talking shit about people. Uh, basically, he brought up this weekend that uh, Baltimore is a rat infested shithole. And yeah, people are super irate about it. You know, nobody, uh, you know, the problem is, is that Baltimore really is a rat infested shithole. And it's been under, uh, it's been, you know, under Democratic control for like 75 years, I think, 80 years. It's, it's crazy. Um, so, but what's really funny is that the same people uh, that were super pissed off about uh, Trump's, um, you know, comments about Baltimore, you know, completely ignored when Bernie Sanders called Baltimore a third world country in disgrace, um, you know, a couple years back. You know, Bernie Sanders, uh, you know, he it, back in... Uh, uh, 2015, he visited Baltimore, and he's like, "Oh man, this is like, you think you're in a third world country?" Nobody said shit. You know, nobody said shit when um, nobody said shit when Hillary Clinton called half the country deplorables. Nobody said shit when you know various uh, you know people make remarks about flyover country and and you know Middle America and stuff like that. But you call Baltimore, a rat-infested, crime-plagued shithole, um, and people lose their fucking minds. Well, you know that's that's how it is. But it's really hard to uh, it's really hard to disagree that Baltimore's having issues when they are on track to top three hundred murders, three hundred homicides for the fifth year in a row. You know, you've got these people, oh my God, you know, Baltimore's reps are, are legends, are so great. And meanwhile, Baltimore is a fucking crime. It's a war zone. You want to you wanna hear how bad it, Baltimore is in comparison to um, the rest of the, or the rest of the world? Juarez, Mexico, one of the most dangerous places in the world, is ranked 20th of deadly cities in, on, in the, na or in the world. Baltimore is t ranked 21. You know, Baltimore has something like 300 or 3,500 uh, homicides per 100,000 people. Something crazy like that. It, it's it's just absolutely nuts. And, uh, yeah, they're... No, I'm sorry. Their homicide rate per 100,000 people is 56, you know, per 100,000. Chicago, which is regularly in the news for shootings every weekend where people getting blasted, has a homicide rate of 24 per 100,000 people. So less than half of Baltimore. Baltimore is filled with, you know, just shuttered tenement homes. Just crime everywhere. There was a, uh, uh, there's videos of teens going down the uh, Baltimore um, tourist areas and, you know, what, you know, waylaying people and just racking up all kinds of damage and beating the shit out of people and robbing them, robbing stores, and everybody's like, oh no, we can't talk about this. You know, and, and what aggravates me is that my family is from Baltimore. My mom was born and raised in Baltimore. My dad was born and raised in Baltimore. My dad's, uh, you know, both of my extended families were raised or from Baltimore. Baltimore used to be known as the Little Jerusalem. It was the highest concentration of, uh, of Jews outside of New York, um, you know, on the eastern seaboard. And it has turned into a fucking hellhole. And I tell my, I tell my dad, get out of Baltimore. You know, the, the crime is, is out of control. Oh, no, it's not where we're at, you know. My little brother, you know, after he was done with med school, went to do his internship at Johns Hopkins uh, Hospital and got assaulted while sitting in his car waiting at a stoplight guy reached in through the window punched him you know square in the face sat on his car hood and said call the cops they know who i am you know what you gonna do nothing you know it's baltimore is fucked up and yeah people have been ignoring it for decades donald trump points out that they've got a rat problem there and everybody fucking loses their minds and what's even more funny is that yeah um they actually do have a rat problem. There was the New York Times last year. Um, let me see if I can actually find this. New York Times last year. 
<coughs> you know, they they <coughs> they pointed out why or or Baltimore's failing efforts at rodent extermination. I mean, they were just huge, huge um, rat things, and. Uh, now they're like, oh my God, how dare Trump uh, point out all the rats in Baltimore? It's just, it's, there's, this is why the media is a fucking problem. So, yeah. Sorry, guys, if I don't sound uh, too with it today, I'm just really not, uh, really not feeling well. Uh, it wasn't Iron Kid 883 from Baltimore. Yeah, you know, little known fact before he got deported back to Ireland, Iron Kid 83 lived in Baltimore uh, for quite a while. And, uh, you know, single-handedly, you know, increased their violent crime rate by a huge margin. Um, you know, that's why he's in Ireland these days, is that he's uh, trying to fight extradition and not doing a very good job of it. Um, him and Jeffrey Epstein, you know, look for them in uh, prison cells together shortly. All right, so... Um, 542 let's uh talk about a couple more issues uh going on and then we will uh get back to giveaways um reps phil Rowe of tennessee and colin peterson of uh, minnesota introduced legislation last week prohibiting the veterans administration from interfering with veterans second amendment rights because the vet needs help managing finances <sighs> this is uh basically in response to something that happened during the obama administration where they passed um, a regulation where if a veteran had uh, problems managing their finances and requested help uh, through the VA or Social Security Administration, um, basically they would make him a prohibited person and take his Second Amendment rights away. Um, guys, you know, these the war on terror has seen a sea change in how the military operates. And you know, a lot of guys are coming back with survive with injuries that would have killed them in uh, previous conflicts. We have better armored vehicles such as the MRAP and the uh, the other um, vehicles, the Huskies and and the uh, various other ones. But you've still got people getting smacked in the noggin and developing traumatic brain injuries from the concussive blast of all these IEDs going off. Um, better helmets are helping, better pads inside the helmets, uh, the mine resistant vehicles are definitely helping, better IED, uh, counter IED uh, warfare, but IEDs are still a massive killer and still cause major injuries. And getting cranked in the noggin um, can cause you to have lots of uh, issues. Uh, especially with traumatic brain injury uh, and various other things. So, you know, basically uh, they are saying, or what Obama tried to do was take away the gun rights of people who needed, um, um, take away the gun rights of people who requested help uh, for from the VA and Social Security. And this created a huge outcry, and when Trump got in office, this, these regulations were uh, rolled back. And Roe and Peterson are, uh, are basically trying to put forward a bill that will prevent this from happening again. Um, so this is, this is a good story. This is a good thing to do. You know, really, the people that are against this, um, you know, are put, you know, the people who were against us really put forth a lot of stereotypes, um, you know, about uh, the crazy vets and stuff like that. And, you know, there's no reason to take away somebody's constitutional rights without due process. And that was one of the things that was happening here is that they would, uh, you know, the veterans, um, if they needed help with their VA benefits, then they could get rec reported to NICS, the National Instant, Check System, uh, National Instant Criminal Background Check System as prohibited and there's no appeals process there's no way to even know that this happened until they tried to buy a gun so you know it was just a really shitty thing to do and uh i'm glad that action's being taken against this to prevent from happening in the future last up gun controlled mexico 30 3080 homicides in june holy shit 3,080 homicides in June. I mean, that's that's fucking crazy, folks. That's If that was for the entire year, that'd be 36,000 homicides for the entire year. You know, to put it in perspective, here in America, we have 15,000 homicides 
um, you know, a year with roughly 11,000 of them being done by guns. These guys are seeing, you know, fucking 3,000 homicides in a month. And they've got strict, strict gun control in Mexico. Mexico has one gun store in the entire country. It's in Mexico City. It's administered by the military. You can't buy guns in semi-auto or, you know, military calibers. So 9 mil, 45, uh, 40 cal, you know, can't buy that. Can't buy 223. Can't buy 762. All you can buy are uh, non-military calibers. So you'll see a bunch of 1911s down there and like 38 Super bunch of 270 uh, um, you know, Winchesters and stuff like that. You see 12 gauges and things. But any kind of military caliber is banned. Military style weapons, semi-automatic weapons, banned. You know, yet, despite all this gun control, Mexico still had 3,000 fucking homicides in June. That is crazy. You know, you, they've got laws, uh, gun controls... On ammo, you can possess 500 cartridges in 22 caliber, 1,000 cartridges for shotguns, and 200 cal or cartridges for other permitted firearms. That's like not even an afternoon shooting uh, if you go to the range. You know, they had 17,000 killings in uh, Mexico in the first six months of 2019. That, that's just nuts, folks. And yet, these people want to see the same gun control here. That is fucked up. So yeah, let's uh, let's not do that. How about uh, you know we concentrate on what we need to do? So yeah, uh, so now yeah, five forty eight p.m. Here we go. Uh, we have given away so far the sticker. Um, you know, I got sidetracked very early, um, and uh, you know we need to. You know, we've given away the sticker. The sticker went to Gronk. Um, so now it is time to give away the Bladeforms.com logo patch, and. Uh, yeah, Jason Puckett. Gee, it's almost like people willing to commit murder don't care about gun laws. Yeah, no kidding. It's, you know... And remember what I said about uh, Juarez, Mexico, uh, having, you know, higher homicide than Baltimore. You know, they're the next rank up. And But, you know, apparently border control is not something that we're allowed to have. So yeah, let's uh, let's get to this, folks. Let's get to random.org and let's give away the uh, next item here. So we will do this. All right. So hit the generate button. Post number one thirty five. Post number one thirty five should be on page seven, I believe, on the giveaway thread. So let's go to the giveaway thread. Post number one thirty five wins the bladeforms.com Velcro patch. All right. 133, 134, 135. Bullvang. So 135. Bullvang. Wins the bladeforms.com Velcro patch. So congratulations to Bullvang. Uh, he gets the bladeforms.com Velcro patch in one of these awesome colors. Blue, gold, multicam, OD green, or stealth gray. So, uh... Yeah, congrats to uh, Bullvang. All right, so next up, uh, we are going to do the uh, giveaway for the uh, Bladeforms.com logo t-shirt that you can see behind me here. Uh, Bladeforms.com logo t-shirt behind me is, uh, I think it's pre-shrunk cotton, has the Bladeforms.com logo on the back here, and then has a smaller Bladeforms logo on the uh, front left chest. For those of you who love, uh, you know, love uh, having the Bladeforms.com logo on your front and back. So, yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and do that. So, let's hit, let's get to random.org. Hit the generate button. And post, or post number 293 on the uh, giveaway thread is going to be it. So, I think it was two number, 293, I think, should be on page 15. So let's take a look. Yep, 293 is going to be on page 15. All right, Beast Mode 24. So post 293, Beast Mode 24. Wait a second, did Beast Mode 24 win something a couple weeks back?
Well, going all the way back to week 24, I'm not seeing uh, Beast Mode having won anything. Um, I mean, it's entirely possible he won something earlier than that. Beast Mode 24, let's see. Nope. Yeah, not looking, looking at the ones up on the uh, wall. You know, it doesn't look like uh, Beast Mode 24 won anything on those either. So, yeah, uh, name just must seem familiar for some reason. So, yeah, there we go. Peace. Congrats to uh, Beast Mode. Congrats to Beast Mode 24 for winning the logo T-shirt. So, congrats. So, that leaves... Um, that leaves the bladeforms.com uh, paid subscription. That leaves the grand prize and then the live stream prize pack for you guys. So let's uh, go ahead and do the bladeforms.com membership. We'll hit generate, post number 143. So go to the giveaway thread. Post number 143 should be on page 7 or 8. Yep, page eight. All right, post number one three, one forty three. G E D licks. Get licks wins the uh, bladeforms.com uh, membership extension. Get licks post one forty three wins the BFC membership extension. All right, so as you can see, uh, Gedlix has been a member since 2012. He's got 2,041 me uh, messages. And, uh, yeah, he's a uh, gold member from Oregon, so good for him. All right, so I guess we are in uh, the end game here. So all we have left to do is the grand prize of the Becker. BK5 Magnum Camp Knife from uh, designed by Ethan Becker from Becker Knife and Tool. This used to be uh, uh, done by uh, Camillus. And then uh, when Camillus went under, uh, Ethan went over to K-Bar and is doing them uh, or was doing them in 1095 steel. GVL6H uh, Grivery handle. Very ergonomic, just basically a large uh, kitchen slicer uh, that you can take out on the trail with you. Uh, perfect for cleaning, cleaning game and other tasks uh, and cooking out in the uh, uh, field. And we're going to be giving that away next. So uh, are you guys ready for the uh, grand prize giveaway? If you are ready, give me a G in chat. In the meantime, uh, hopefully you guys are having a good weekend. Um, you know, it's super, super hot here, and just so hot that you just can't really muster the energy to do anything, so yeah. Iron Kid, uh, Iron Kid obviously does not, is not liked by, uh, Iron Kid is not liked by, uh, YouTube's algorithm either. They, uh, try to hold his chat for, or hold his messages for spamming. I'm seeing a whole bunch of G's in uh, chat, so that means up oh, Chuck Clark is uh, also being that being held. We got 23 people watching. Oh, cool! Looks like we might have a decent live stream giveaway then. All right, so let's uh, let's get to the uh, live stream giveaway then, or let's get to the uh, grand prize giveaway rather. I hit the generate button. Post number 196 is the winner of that. 196. Go to the giveaway thread, page 10, I believe that's on, all right, 184, 187, 190, 93, 94, 95, 196, tack for me, tack for me. All right, Tack for Me has been a member since October 9th, 2012, has a grand total of 216 messages, and he has won the Week 30, Week 30 Grand Prize is Tack for Me with Post 196. 
So congrats to him. Uh, let's see. Misplaced B Hillbilly. Going to be giving any more traditional folders in the live stream? That is a good question. Uh, mid, um, misplaced Hillbilly. I have got... Um, I've got a few of bladeforums.com um, traditional folders from various uh, runs that we did before. I've got a couple of those left in various styles that I need to dig out. So I think uh, maybe for like week 52, I'll give away uh, one of them. I think I've got like a blue skyline uh, laying around here somewhere as well. I've got some uh, queen cutlery stuff laying around here. And I've got some uh, other stuff, um, you know, other traditionals that uh, we can give away. So, yeah, I mean, why not? Why I, I don't have a problem giving away the uh, uh, giving away some traditional stuff. So, yeah, we could totally do that, you know, if you guys are into it. Or even if you're not into it, you know, because uh, fuck Iron Kid. Iron Kid hates uh, traditional knives, so why should he have a choice in the matter? <coughs> All right, so we have given away the Bladeforms.com sticker. We have given away the Bladeforms.com Velcro patch. We've given away the Bladeforms.com logo t-shirt. We've given away the Bladeforms.com uh, paid subscription. We've given away the live, or we've given away the grand prize for week 30, the K-Bar Becker BK5 uh, Magnum Camp Knife. So you know what that means. It is time to give away the uh, live stream prize pack. And as I said in the beginning of the episode, or beginning of uh, the show this week, this week uh, live stream prize, uh, grand prize, is going to be a SOG TF5 uh, Trident in desert camo with a partially serrated edge. This is an assisted opener. As you can see, opens like that. So somebody is going to win that. Somebody is going to win an HK Knife sticker, a Wiley X sticker, a SE AH1 Arrowhead. That's going in the box. Uh, somebody is going to win uh, some miscellaneous desk crap, such as piece of 550 cord and uh, various day glow. Um, various uh, day glow uh, zip ties. I've got a RB sauce that's going into the box here. And then the classic favorite, AK-47 gas station hobo knife. Check it out. AK-47 Flying Falcon, only the finest of Chineseium for you guys. Uh, camera doesn't want to focus on this. Will the camera focus? Yeah, three inch closed uh, tactical folder stainless steel blade. AK-47 model 15-342 uh, Flying Falcon. Has a thumb screw for easy opening. Wow, look at the quality there, folks. Amazing. One of you is going to win this. So, yeah. Um, Jason Puckett, I've been hunting for traditional with a pocket clip all day. I know the clip makes it non-traditional, but I'd lose it otherwise. Um, Settling on a Roiki or something or other. Jason, have you seen the um, have you seen the new Gerbers uh, that have come out that are kind of uh, they're not really super traditional, but they've got kind of a uh, neato traditional shape to them. There's the jukebox <coughs> that uh, came out with acrylic uh, handles that has kind of a cleaver shape. Actually, as a matter of fact, yeah. Let me. Uh, I tell you what, here here's what I'm going to do here. Let's uh, get the music started. Uh, if you guys are ready for the live stream giveaway, we'll do that. I'm going to turn on the Bladeforms logo. We're going to do the uh, music. You have got until the music ends. You have uh, get your usernames into the chat for the live stream giveaway. All right. Be right back.
right, folks, you guys have just over two minutes left to get uh, your usernames in the chat window if you want to be entered into the uh, live stream giveaway thing. All righty. <coughs> Excuse me. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I was talking about the uh, uh, new Gerbers here. Uh, we just got in some of these. You guys may, if you have been watching, um, is the music not going on? Okay, do you hear the music now? Okay, there we go. Um, so, yeah, you guys uh, may have seen my videos from uh, SHOT Show about the new Gerber stuff. And here, this is the new Gerber jukebox. Uh, available in a couple different or available in these two configurations you got tortoise shell and white marble acrylic and they have got uh, a pocket clip here and it's a locking liner knife so you know if you're looking for something that has kind of a traditional feel you know this has got the peasant style sword uh, style tang on there that you use to open it it's got kind of the straight razor really you guys aren't hearing the music at all what about now do you not hear the music weird um yeah you gotta those of you guys have uh, a minute left to get uh uh the uh get your names in so yeah these are the new gerber jukeboxes uh available in two colors the tortoise shell and the white marble um there's also the straight laces here um with the kind of warning blade and the retro look uh, these aren't, again, tr traditional traditionals, but they do have the pocket clips on them. And these are, uh, these in particular are slip joints. So, you know, those of you who live in areas like New York or the uh, cursed island nations of the UK, uh, you can have those without uh, worrying about running into locking knife laws. And then there's also the uh, straight laces. Uh, these just came out. Uh, this is this one here is uh, white G10. This one here has got uh, bamboo. Um, so yeah, I mean Gruber's got a whole bunch of uh, neat new stuff this year that uh, really appeals to the uh, retro look. Um, if you like that, so there you go. All right, so music has stopped. Uh, you guys are telling me that you couldn't even hear the music, so uh, I guess it doesn't even matter. So everybody, uh, do we have any alibis? Anybody that didn't get their name in um, for the uh, live stream giveaway? Last chance. You got ten seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All right. Alibis are gone for the uh, live stream uh, prize pack um, entry. So yeah. So since I was busy talking to you guys, I never uh, edited um, the usernames here on the list to get uh, everything set up for the uh, for the random.org or for the uh, random name picker. So hang on just a second here while I get that done. I'm seeing a couple new names here. Uh, KM Fishtifer, I don't think I've seen you in the uh, chat before. Misplaced Hillbilly, of course, you're new, or you're here, CB6AM1, uh, said that this is the first time he's been in. Kevin Nelson, Boss1918, I don't think I've seen you before. Iron Kid, you don't you don't get to enter into the contest because uh, you, and, you and the wife just won something like a week ago or two. So, yeah, you're, uh, fuck you, Iron Kid, you don't get to win nothing. All right, so, uh, just like we use random.org, um... Just like we use random.org to pick uh, random post numbers, we use our random name picker to pick uh, people. So uh, here's all the names. P.O. Ma, Kevin Nelson, Chris Doyle, Misplaced Hillbilly. Delete that out so that way it's not on not uh, taking up all that space SWEDC CB6AM1 KM Coyote Trails Mike Cookie uh, Rojimbo Dwight Doucet um, J Ray's Tech Flambe 
I think very deeply, and Chuck Clark. So these are the folks who are entered into this week. And if you guys are ready, uh, let's go ahead and hit it. You guys ready to do it? You're going to cause a domestic here, Spark? Well, hey, you know, if uh, if he murders you, Big Bad Goth, then, you know, sorry about your luck. You, you knew who you were marrying getting into it. All right, so let's... Uh, Let's run the jewels here. Misplaced hillbilly. Misplaced hillbilly wins the bladeforms.com 20th anniversary week 30 giveaway. So let's uh, get that done. Congrats to misplaced hillbilly for winning the live stream prize pack. So yeah, Misplaced Hillbilly, I'll contact you sometime in the next week or so uh, to get your address for the live stream prize pack. Um, again, you're getting the, uh, again, you're getting the Trident, the SE Arrowhead, the uh, AK-47 Flying Falcon, a um, couple stickers, the uh, hank of uh, 550 cord, some desk crap, uh, some Arby's horsey sauce, or Arby sauce rather, and that's about it. So yeah, um, Rojimbo, sorry man, I know you wanted that Arby sauce pack. I've got, guess what? I've got, I've got a second Arby sauce pack here, just for next week's live stream prize uh, winner. So. Whoever tunes in next week will have a chance to win the Arby's uh, sauce pack. Could be you. Could be, uh, you know, one of you guys could win that. One of you guys might not. Somebody might even win, um, you know, the Hillary Clinton ur urinal sticker. Somebody might win the federal toilet camera um, warning sticker. Yeah, <laughs> I love this. I, as soon as I saw this, I picked this up. Um, I'm tempted to put a whole bunch of these in airport bathrooms and airplane bathrooms next time I get on a plane. Uh, Gary Grayley, Spark, if you went on live prize giveaway, can you still put in for the main thread prize? Sure, why not? Go ahead and do it. Um, now, that said, if you, um, if you win in the, you know, if you win one of the other main prizes, like a sticker, t-shirt, patch, uh, or membership, then you are, you know, cut off from the main prize giveaway for at least, you know, 24 weeks. Um, Dwight Doucet, Wendy's. Uh, you're saying put the sticker in Wendy's or saying that I need to get some sauce from Wendy's? Uh, who knows? We'll see. So yeah, hot ma'am, Arby sauce, Arby sauce, it pays to be a winner, you know. Somebody is going to win Arby sauce. Might as well be one of y'all. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Uh, again, oh yeah, make sure that uh, make sure that you enter to win next week's uh, prize here. Oh, I've got alerts and I've got unread conversations. Make sure that you enter to win next week's prize for the Himalayan Imports Angola Kukri. Uh, we've got that thread uh, live and ready to go. So make sure you get in there. Um, I've got the Angola uh, Kukri here. For, since people are already leaving since I've done the giveaway, this is what the Angola Kukri looks like. 12 inches long, horn handle, wood sheath, two extra little daggers in there. Um, so yeah, make sure you enter to win on that. Make sure that you um, like and comment and subscribe down below. Make sure that you uh, share videos with your friends and do all the rest of this stuff. But yeah, make sure that you get your entry in for next week's. The contest will close next Saturday at midnight. And we'll be doing live stream giveaway same time as this one was next week. So thank you all for tuning in. Appreciate um, appreciate y'all watching. I hope you guys have a great day. Have a great weekend for what's left of it. And y'all be safe out there, okay? Have a good one.